everyone and welcome back to our video series on the China coin. Now this is the final part in our three-part series and in this video we're really going to be drawing on that historical information, the plot summary, the second opinions and also those belonging themes and really putting the icing on the cake through looking at specific examples of textual detail and really analysing quotes and techniques from that novel to improve the sophistication of your writing. So let's look at analysing this novel. Basically what's really important is that you need to understand how this novel is constructed through language. So although Bailey is using simple language, there are techniques which are throughout the work which you must understand. So it can be easy to sort of fall into that trap of thinking um, this language is so simple because it's written for children that there are no techniques at all. That's absolutely not true. There are a number of techniques which you can write about and we're going to take a look at all of these now. So we're going to be examining a number of language techniques and trace examples of these in the work. All of these texts come together to create the work. And the way that it is constructed can be understood through um, this breakdown. So we're really going to be um, looking at the text in more detail, stripping back quotes, really understanding what they mean and what these techniques indicate for you as a reader. And then looking at how you can actually use these in your own essays. So let's look at some language techniques which are in this work. So the first technique is that of intertextuality. Now there are references throughout this work um, to traditional Chinese songs, poems and place names. So that really builds up that sense of culture through this technique of intertextuality. We're really getting a sense that the author's done a lot of research and through this work has really compiled um, a really good snapshot of the Chinese culture. So these are quoted to give a sense of culture and belonging to history and tradition. The poem, I see you, little brown leaf, on the dark water of the Min, is a really good example of this because this is a traditional Chinese poem which is being quoted um, at this family meal. So it's a really good indication of the fact that the author here is using different sources to construct a work representative of the culture as a whole. Metaphor is another technique which is used in the work. Now, obviously, metaphor is saying that something is something. So while a simile is saying, um, you know, comparing two things and saying something's like or as something else, a metaphor is really a way of drawing a very definite comparison. So this quote here, in Australia, you are Australian. In China, you are Chinese. In Chinese, you are pear. So that sort of um, very bizarre fruit imagery to demonstrate the fact that she really doesn't fit in because she belongs to those two different cultures. She's sort of straddling them and she doesn't find belonging in both because of that part of her which lies in the other one. So that fruit metaphor there um, is really interesting in expressing those cultural ideas. So the comparison to um, the swollen, odd-looking fruit here is showing that sense of disconnection that she has to the culture and that she has to the Chinese people and her family in China and the culture really as a whole. So um, metaphor is also a really good way of the author expressing lack of belonging to culture because she crosses both. So the fact that she doesn't just belong to one culture, but because she belongs to two, she's almost um, belonging to two half-heartedly, rather than belonging to one completely. So um, another metaphor here is that sense of the owl-faced boy. So that's just another indication of the way that he's using metaphor as a way of increasing the descriptiveness of his work, really making it interesting to read and um, quite flashy writing, which is going to be interesting and poetic for the reader. If we look at the technique of inner monologue, we can also trace this throughout the work. Now, we have the sense throughout that Leah um, shares that connection with her dad and she does that through thinking to herself and addressing him in her mind. So she states, We're still chasing the coin, Dad, but it's getting so complicated. I'm not complicated. So that sense that within her own mind, she's almost got an inner monologue. She's expressing her views through addressing her dad. 
So the internal interactions with her father show an awareness of belonging to family. So you really get that sense that um, she's got a very strong connection with her father to the point that even though he's dead, she's still interacting with him and speaking to him and they still have that really um, very strong bond of father and child. The knowledge of ancestry and connection to the dead are obviously important elements of the Chinese culture. So that is again reflective of the way in which Bailey's constructed a very culturally accurate work, which is bringing together a lot of research and a lot of travel experiences and a lot of sources. The technique of symbolism is also used throughout this work. So you get the symbol here that Leah is comparing her mother to an evil aunt and a snake woman. So that very strong sense of symbolism, um, which is really an indication of the way in which Leah feels about her mother. So this is expressing her disconnection and early distance from her mother. So that image of snake, obviously, is very symbolic of sort of, um, obviously, the nasty things in life. The snake is quite a dangerous creature, one which is, isn't widely liked. So you get that sense that Leah feels that way towards her own mother. This symbolic link to fairy tales and animal symbolism um, is also prominent through this quote. The evil aunt is um, recalling that wicked stepmother image which is used throughout fairy tales. So you again you get that sense of intertextuality in the work. For example, um, throughout the work you get red being a symbol of the government. So that's kind of used as a, a colour symbol throughout the work and is recurring as a motif to represent really what the students are rising against. So it's that sort of image which they can rebel against throughout the work. Dialogue is also a really important language technique which Bailey uses. Now this is basically used to express arguments of the protesters. So it's a really good way of literally expressing their views and perhaps even quoting exactly what they would have said. So you get quotes like democracy, no more Guangxi, no more influence, no more backdoor deals. So um, that repeated quote, those repeated exclamations are really creating that sense of excitement. Um, the repeated no more, no more, no more is giving you a sense that they're so desperate to achieve these goals, they're so passionate about what they believe in. The repeated exclamations also create a mood of excitement, revolution and also belonging to that movement of change. So you really get the sense that as students they're interested in this movement, they want to be a part of it and they're desperate to see through that change. This is also used to characterise Leah and give her a strong voice as the main persona. So when you hear Leah's dialogue, you can almost characterise her in your mind as this is a really good way of getting across a sense of who the character is. So. Um, for example, I just want vegetables, I just want rice. You get this sort of very stubborn, petulant voice of Leah in approaching her mother and this is shown through the repetition of I want, I want. So that sense that she wants what she wants and the dialogue is very expressive of that relationship in which she's demanding what she wants from her mother. So that brings us to the end of our examination of techniques. Obviously, um, you need to find your own techniques, find examples. As you're reading through the book, use things like highlighting and underlining to demonstrate key quotes which you think you can use for your essay. A really valuable resource which you can use is the Alan Bailey homepage. And you'll see the um, entrance to the page here, which you can really use um, as a resource, reading up some interviews, um, opinion pieces written by him, and just getting an insight into why he wrote this work. You can also look at some further resources. So there is material online, such as his own website, as we discussed, alanbailey.com.au. You can also find book reviews, interviews with the author and background information on this historical period through internet research. You can also download the resource booklet on the China Coin, which features additional resources free from the Prime Education website. So that's a really good source for you there. Resources are also available at the HSC online site. So that's also a really good place where you can build up your understanding of this text and then work on writing essays to demonstrate that understanding. So that brings us to the end today of our lesson on the China coin. 
Now through a three part video we've examined not only the background and the plot summary but really dissected the way in which you can trace belonging through the work and the way in which you can prove those ideas about belonging through a really solid analysis of quotes and techniques. So take on board what this video has to show you and you'll be well on your way to writing a strong and sophisticated essay about this text, The China Coin. Thank you.